What's up everybody, Tom here with another video. Today we'll be talking about the latest stock market news along with our technical analysis thoughts on the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, Volatility Index, Gold and US Dollar. Well, it looks like stimulus is back on after a barrage of tweets yesterday, but more importantly, we're seeing some amazing technical setups in the stock markets right now. Stay tuned. So I think one of the best places to start is obviously by just quickly talking about some of this Twitter news that we're seeing, some of the noise in the markets right now. Now, I don't think it's in Trump's best interest to obviously have a weakening stock market into the election. And after yesterday's tweet and then reaction, we did see a little bit of a pullback against that kind of idea that stimulus is off. And Donald Trump said, if I am sent a standalone bill for stimulus checks, $1,200, they will go out to our great people immediately. I'm ready to sign right now. Are you listening, Nancy? Now, in this case, I think the big thing is here, there's a clear idea in the markets that we're always looking at the Ford picture. We are going to get a stimulus package in the US. We all know that. We know that it's going to be somewhere between that 1.6 trillion and 2.1 to 2.3 trillion dollars. And we also know that there's most likely going to be a second round of checks. So what the market did was it reacted very positively to this and pushed it back into the resistance. Now you can call that a pretty much a stop hunt based on the news. It's not the first time we've seen the market react negatively to one of Donald Trump's tweets and then of course put it all back on over the Asian into the next session and that is what happened. I think yesterday though, the interesting thing is we're still seeing Google and Facebook lagging the other FANG stocks. It was pretty much a sea of green everywhere. And there were some sectors that did specifically well, but Google and Facebook always seem to provide that lagging opportunity in the FANG stocks when it comes to bullish movement. What about the actual indices themselves though? Well, the, well, the Dow Jones, surprise guys, 1.91%, SPX 1.74 and NASDAQ 1.88. So we actually had the Dow Jones doing better than the other indices yesterday. And again, the NASDAQ wasn't that standout success that it usually has been. I think this is because some of those stocks aren't necessarily reacting that well to the possibility of, of course, a democratic win. When we take a look at the movement throughout the day, it was generally bullish throughout the day, a little bit of a sell-off in the end, but nothing notable from the close trades. We know the close is the most important key, and we hit a whole bunch of resistances on the S&P 500 and other, of course, indices. From a sector perspective, materials were back on board. They were the strongest sector of the day. Makes me kind of happy, I guess, because this is a sector that you generally want to see in recovery phases and material sector was a little bit beaten down over the last couple of weeks. So rotation coming back in there and overall, most sectors doing well. No surprise that utilities was one of the weaker performing because it's been so strong in this downtrend of the last couple of weeks. On to CBOE daily market statistics. What are we seeing in terms of book call ratios? A 1.62 reading for the SPX yesterday. And that's up, of course, based on that 1.5 reading the other day. And makes sense, guys. Look, if we have a market that is trapping these kind of short-term positions, we are getting an increase in put call ratio. More people, of course, trying to sell the market based on fear and what we saw yesterday. And of course, the market's gonna do the inverse of that, go up and it's gonna do it because it's trying to take money from these positions. It's pretty standard and it's played out a lot throughout the last couple of years. So let's shake things up a little bit. Let's have a look at this Dow Jones setup. And what I'm seeing here on the daily is a pretty strong little setup in terms of an inverse head and shoulders. We basically have our left shoulder, head and right shoulder. And we've also got some nice price action coming into this break close above here. We've got a bullish hammer, then we've got a bullish engulfing candle yesterday and it's all holding a very nice level. Now, I've quickly extrapolated out what this inverse head and shoulders would say in terms of take profit zone. And you'll notice that it says previous highs. So we've got it right take profiting at previous highs. Now, one of the things I love about structure in the market and I love about patterns in general is that when you have a level that's breaking and closing above, if that's predicting a previous level of resistance structure in the market, it means that the market has thought about this level, it's thought about the pattern, and of course, it's a much more solid take profit zone. When you have structure, it's much more solid. It always is and generally always will be. If we go into the four hour here on the Dow, we can see again that this is a close above here in the futures that we haven't had since pretty much 
28th of September. So we haven't been above this zone for quite a while. This is the 28,250 area. We've got our first body close above this area and it's preempting maybe the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. And we'll take a look at those charts in just a minute. So Dow Jones back in the picture here, actually presenting the stronger looking pattern of the day. When we take a look at the American dollar, well, the American dollar is still stuck in the middle of nowhere. The US dollar is not doing so well. What have we got going on? Well, 93.64 right now in terms of futures trading, and we're still stuck within the range. We had the bullish engulf, and it turned out to be a little bit of a fake out signal. We didn't get that flow on effect. This is because, of course, of the nature of the reaction to that Twitter post. But in this case, we need to get above this 50 exponential moving average, this 93.86 zone, and close above it on the daily. We haven't done so. If we do, we would expect the market to go back into previous highs. It's those zones that become important. Right now, we're in no-go zone. It's impossible to know which way the dollar is trying to predict itself. It's stuck between a support, a resistance, and that's just how it is. But when it closes up or below these zones, if it closes below, it's gonna go for the 92.80 zone. If it closes above, it'll probably go for the last previous highs, that 94.50 to 94.60 area. So that's the thing with technical analysis and that's the problem with sometimes trading within the ranges is you know you're stuck within a zone and until you get that breakout, you don't have the strong signal either way. But what about the S&P 500? Well, what's going on there? We'll start with our analysis here on the SPX. So we'll start with the real market and the real body closes. Yesterday, we mentioned that the market sold off into the 20 and the 50 exponential moving averages. It did act as support during the futures session. Again, it shows that the real market gives you the better signals and it always does. You could have traded the futures off this, but the futures weren't necessarily showing a stronger buy zone as the real market was. So we saw the real market bull up and it's hit this 34.20 zone, this key area. 34.20, 34.30 is where we've been looking at resistance for breakout longs. And we're really testing it right now. So let's just quickly have a look at what this means. I'm looking at this from a perspective of a massive inverse head and shoulders. We've now got decent structure here on the right shoulder after that pullback. We're starting to see a well thought out kind of zone. We've obviously got a very strong left shoulder and head area. And we've got the right kind of cross here of the 20 and the 50 on the four hour. So the real market, if we get a close above this 3420 zone is looking quite bullish. And we expect it to play out really the same way that most of these patterns do play out. A close above followed by an impulse momentum kind of move, then a pullback to the zone, testing the previous resistances as support, and then most likely a further move on to previous highs and then hopefully a completion of this head and shoulders. Now this head and shoulders is actually completing at a point here that'll be higher than previous highs. And will this happen ahead of the election? Well, anything can happen. You follow the price action, obviously, but it's saying that the market should go to around a 36.25. I still think we'll find some resistance here at previous highs around that 3600, but that's very, very close to where this is predicting take profit. So inverse head and shoulders on the S&P 500 is probably the big story right now. If we take a look at the futures, we're seeing a very similar structure as well. You'll notice this from the front screen. We've got our left shoulder, head and right shoulder. And again, the futures have not closed a daily in terms of above these wick zones. We still need to see the close overall, but at this point, everything's looking very bullish and it's the last point for the bears to really regain control of the momentum in this corrective phase. At this point, if we break through, I guess you'd be looking at really the end of the corrective phase and more of the next move up. And this is the type of pattern that we expect at the end of corrective phases, double bottoms, inverse head and shoulders, those kind of things are usually what happens, accumulation channels. All of these kind of patterns are generally the known thing when you hit a nice corrective technical analysis bottom. All right, guys, well, what's happening on the NASDAQ? Well, the NASDAQ had that support found again at the 11,200, 
quickly bounced off that and we still have the 11,600 resistance zone. The Nasdaq's been a little bit weaker and I think this is due to people looking at other sectors in the market and trying to find a little bit more value into a potential Democrat win. If that does happen, of course, people are trying to position for that. And that's why I think we're seeing this rotation and slightly weaker on the Nasdaq. The other reason is as well, antitrust and the whether these big monopoly fang stocks are actually monopolies themselves do we see a retest kind of idea of what happened with microsoft during the mid 2000s we don't know yet but that could be some of the things that are leading to a slightly weaker nasdaq overall it could also be that people just don't see value in the current environment so 11.6 remains the resistance here and we've still got the 11.2 and anything in between here becomes going into the smaller time frames and really looking for shorter time frame opportunity. We've got our key levels and at this stage we're waiting for either to break out above or below and it's becoming a time again where the bears need to regain control if they are to get the market back down to more corrective levels. What's happening on gold? Well, gold did not recover as well as you would think considering the US dollar weakness. We saw gold, of course, reject this 1920 zone. We spoke about how this is such a key level for gold. It hit the 1920 resistance, shorted off. I'd still set alerts for 1920 as if we ended up bulling and moving ahead of this position. We've talked about how that's such a strong signal and we get back to maybe the 1960 and possibly even higher highs. But 1920 remains the key resistance. And where we are right now is basically we've shorted off the two moving averages, the 50 and the 20 exponential. We've come down and found previous resistance as support. And if we now break low below this point, we pretty much go to 1850 here. So we do have some potential trade opportunities where again, if you're not in right now, there's nothing much for you. But if you see closes below this point, it will probably flow on to previous low tests. And if you see closes above this point, it probably leads to, of course, tests of the 1920. So there are some zones here for gold. But overall, the interesting factor was yesterday when it broke past and hit that 1920 and then, of course, sold off aggressively against that. That shows a lot to do with sentiment. If we take a look at silver, very, very similar across the board. We basically had the resistance hold. We've now picked back up to the 20 exponential moving average. And it's always worth having like a 2450 kind of resistance break to see if silver gets and closes above that. As I think what would happen with silver is if that happened, it would move up, hit 25, come back down, test the previous resistance levels and act as support, and then move into the 26. The 26 is what we call like a one, two, three, four kind of resistance level. We have so much support through here that will act as resistance plus a 200 simple moving average on the four hour. So we hope this video helped you today. If it did, remember to subscribe and of course hit that alert button. We won't be doing a live stream tonight for the opening bell, but of course we will be doing one next Monday in terms of live opening bell series. We do that every week, so come join us if that's something that interests you. Happy trading, everybody. Bye for now.